Welcome to Canada's podcast. Hi, this is Celine Williams hosting from Ontario for Canada's podcast. Today, my guest is Lauren Mazels, who is a certified meeting professional and is the founder and president of Loma Marketing Agency, an events experience firm that creates holistic strategies for in-person, virtual and hybrid events that meet the strategic, creative and experiential goals of their clients and partners. Lauren, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Celine. Yeah, it's a, completely a pleasure. I'm really interested in hearing all about your business and how what you got here, but also, you know, how things are have changed because I know events has been an industry that's been very affected in the past year. So let's start <laughs> with the the kind of journey of what how did you get to where you are at now? What was your journey to get to running this marketing agency? Yeah. Um, good question. I studied uh, at Ryerson University, did my Bachelor of Commerce with a major in marketing, and found myself with an internship at an event agency. And uh, it just spoke to everything, you know, A type, my A type personality was, you know, multitasking, organizing, all the things I love to do, um, and got the chance to, to work with some great clients and, and learn. So I was there for about three years and I just knew, I think it chose me. <laughs> I often say, you know, how did I get into this field? But it, it, it chose me and spoke to me. So I was fortunate enough to launch my career that way with an agency called Vision Co. in Toronto. Um, spent about three years there and then decided I wanted to go in-house on the corporate side. So I went to work for Accenture Consulting for a couple of years and helped run all of their in-house events and learned a lot about, you know, how a big large corporation runs day to day, which taught me a lot. Um, and then I found myself at a Toronto start software startup um, called, at the time it was called I Love Awards, it's now called Achievers. And when I joined, it was a small marketing team, we were maybe four people, and they were looking to use events as a vehicle to drive, you know, sales and growth and brand. Um, and so I joined, we were about 35 people. And, uh, you know, helped grow the company, um, which our founder at the time uh, asked a few of us to move out to San Francisco to help grow the, the company on the West Coast and in the U.S. And I was fortunate enough to get to do that. So spent about five years with Achievers, really, um, you know, partnering with the sales organization, leveraging events as a strategic tactic to help drive pipeline, lead generation, brand, um, and had a lot of fun doing it. Um, so it was a, a lot of fun. Spent, you know, five years in San Francisco. And uh, after leaving Achievers, which was acquired by Blackhawk Networks, um, I ended up at a company called Great Place to Work who is, uh, you know, they are all about, you know, culture and, and human capital consulting and creating great places to work for all. And so I went to work with them and their events to the global events team um, for just under two years. And uh, at that time, I had missed Toronto, missed family. Um, San Francisco was a great place to live, but it wasn't home for me. I, I wanted to move back. And so I, I told Great Place to Work I was I was leaving and I had been toying with the idea of what am I going to do when I move home and always thought about starting my own thing. And so I thought, well, there's no time like the present and uh, moved home in 2016 and started Loma Agency, which I was very fortunate after um, you know, letting Great Place to Work know that I was leaving uh, to move home. They said, we want to be your first client. So I came home and they put their trust in me and uh, I came home with a client and the rest is history. <laughs> That's, I mean, what a great story. And also what a wonderful collaboration to have with a former employer and to have them be that supportive. That is rare and it really shouldn't be. So I'm, that's a, it's a really wonderful story and congratulations to you for having that relationship. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I, I'm thankful. Um, I say I'm lucky, but I'm also thankful very all the time because um, Achievers is also a client as well. And so I get to work with people I admire and trust and the respect is reciprocated. And, and that's what makes being a business owner a lot of fun, getting to choose your clients and partners 
is what makes coming to work every day awesome. So I, I'm grateful to them. And we, you know, they, uh, they've just helped us grow year over year. So I'm going to ask this question because you mentioned it. How do you, how do you go about choosing clients and partners? Like, what does that look like? What are your criteria as a business owner? Because, and I'm going to have, and I'm going to give you the context for why I'm asking this is I think that often entrepreneurs feel like they have to take on any client and they have to do anything that comes their way and that they don't have a choice. And I think what you're saying is really important, which is you do get to, and you should be choosing your partners and your clients. So what, you know, from your experience, what does that look like for you? And also, have you ever been in a situation where you didn't use that criteria and it did not go as planned? Yeah, I mean, I think when you're starting out um, as a small business owner, you do want to say yes to everything, right? Because you don't know when the next piece of business is going to come and you are trying to grow and learn. And so I think, um, you know, I have to say our business is 95% referral based. So that's huge because to me, word of mouth is everything. So um, that has enabled us to grow year over year. And, and it, that means we're doing a great job for our customers. If they're passing on our name and, you know, it's all referral based, that says a lot. But in the beginning, I think it's hard because you're not sure um, of what may come, you know, <laughs> what may come and when. Um, but I think I, along with my team, the reason I started my own agency is I've always had a really high bar for a level of service and experience that I pride myself on and our team does. And you listen, it's my name, but it's my name in the title of the company. So, you know, there's a lot that goes into that. And I, we approach every client with, if we can't deliver at that level that we're, we've become known for, then I I'm not going to do you a service and we may not be a good fit. And, and so often we explore that conversation in the beginning, you know, goals. A lot of clients want just a great event, just like execute a great event, just like make it all happen, which we can do. We, we love to do that. But for us, it's more about just putting on a great event. It's the strategy is really what we're passionate about and what keeps our customers coming back because we're aligned with them in making sure that they're driving results, whatever those results are, right? It's a true partnership. So um, I'm proud that we've been able to maintain that over the past five years. And, and that's just, that's our North Star. That's always top of mind. Um, I'm thankful we've never, <laughs> you, to your second question, I, I don't have an example of when it hasn't worked out, um, which I guess means we've held true to those values and standards. Um, and so I'm just, I'm proud that we've been able to do that for the past five years. I think that's phenomenal. Um, and wonderful that you don't have any of the negative stories because a lot of us, a lot of us do, right? And it does mean that you have had clarity and you've stuck, you stuck to not stuck, you stuck to what that what matters to you inside of these relationships. And that's important. Yeah. yeah and I think also, this job in particular, you know, if you Google, like some of the most stressful jobs in the world, ironically, event planning or event management is like top of the list, <laughs> which everybody always laughs at. But it is a very high stress career job, you know, many people don't often see what happens behind the scenes to make everything appear smooth sailing. And so again, starting this, you know, agency was an opportunity to say, okay, there's, there's priorities and, and our job is stressful, but there's also balance is important, right? Having that balance, being able to leave at five o'clock and know, yeah, there's work the next day, but I've done what I needed to do and, and have that work-life balance. It, it, it's not always a balance. There are days where work <laughs> wins and life has to take a backseat and vice versa. But being able to enjoy what we do and, and manage that stress level was really important to me because I had spent, you know, in this career for 15 plus years, a lot of stressful <laughs> times. And I wanted to create an environment where we're having fun doing what we do and, and the stress was manageable.
I think that's a, a um, rarity, <laughs> having been around event planners. Um, we were speaking a little bit beforehand. I've spent a little bit of time around event planners, and and uh, it's a rarity. There's there is a lot of stress in the industry, so I think it's phenomenal that you've been that intentional about creating something different in what you're doing. And I'm sure everyone who works for for you is very grateful for that as well. We try, right? <laughs> we try. So I'm curious. Um, Events is one of the areas that, again, we were speaking before we hit record, but events is one of the areas that has been hit in a very particular way with the pandemic. Um, and we've all heard the stories of events that were canceled last minute. I was, you know, right when we shut down, I was flying back from a trip to visit family and friends in Europe, back to Canada. And I had a 36 hour turnaround before I was supposed to go to an event in the States. And that event was canceled in that 36 hours and Canada was shut down basically two days later um, because of this pandemic. And that was 36 hours and the event was done. And this, you know, a 1500, 2000 person event. This is not an atypical story. <laughs> and I want to acknowledge, I know that this is not an atypical story. So with all of the really unpredictable, sudden, out of nowhere, changing and adjusting and adapting that happened. I'm wondering how, what you saw happening, what your experience was on the other side of this, because I was just an attendee, like most of us were just attendees or, you know, whatever the version of it was. What was your experience on the other side of this? And, you know, a year plus in, um, what has changed? Yeah, it was a whirlwind. And as, as I think I shared with you is last March, we were in San Francisco with a client because we have clients in the US and Canada. And we were in the middle of a summit and, and everything with COVID had started to ramp up just before this conference. And it we were moving forward and we you know discussed protocols and procedures and you know people were canceling, but there was still about a large percentage of people coming. And so we were in the midst of this in the midst of the storm that was brewing, right? And so, you know, the summit went ahead, the conference went ahead, um, and we finished that conference and flew back to Toronto. And the day that we got back, you know, that tipping point, that's when everything changed. And uh, the following week, I had clients calling saying, I need to cancel my contracts, need to, you know. So then we moved into triage mode, right? Because now we're trying to get out of contracts that are not only for last year, but, you know, this year and next year, because nobody knows how long this is going to go on. Um, and so we were just trying to help our clients mitigate their, you know, the damage. And so we spent the next kind of couple months trying to, to do that. And then for me, it was the most important thing was how can I support my team? How can I keep my people? right? Because it's a service business and my people are everything. They are phenomenal. And I, top of mind for me was I can't lose them. So for me, it was like, how do I just keep this boat sailing <laughs> for the next however long? Um, you know, how do I do that? And so, you know, we talked a lot as a team and, and, and we kind of were, you know, it wasn't, it's not like us to just kind of sit back and wait for things to happen. And so we're like, all right, let's try our hand at a virtual event and start going down that road, right? And so we kind of created our own. We created an event called Loma Palooza. It was a one day event. It was about, you know, our tagline was feel good, do good from home. And the goal was to raise money for Food Banks Canada and Feeding America. And we reached out to our partners and friends. And we just tried to create this virtual festival where people could pop in and out. And we had like a DJ and yoga. And um, a cooking brunch session and, you know, a variety of, of sessions. And it was a great opportunity for us to say, okay, like this is the virtual world. This is a virtual event. This is how things work and let's get our hands dirty. And from then on, things just snowballed. And, you know, our clients started coming to us and saying, okay, how can you help us transition those in-person experiences now to virtual? We don't want it to just be a Zoom meeting. We want it to be special. And so we've spent the past year, I think, 
knock on whatever, working on some awesome virtual experiences, right? Making them different and unique, whether it's a sales kickoff or a cocktail reception or a conference, really focusing on differentiating that experience and making the best of the hand we've all been dealt, right? And we've learned a ton. We've learned a ton. We've had a lot of fun. Um, And the reality is this is not going away. You know, the hybrid is the future. Hybrid events like virtual, there will always be a a virtual complement. And so it's, you know, it's been a blessing that we've developed a whole new skill set and service offering that we can, um, you know, include in our scope of services and, and keeps pushing us to be to learn more. So it's it's been it's been a blessing. When I say that now, COVID has not been a blessing. I know it's it's caused a lot of harm for for a lot of people, but as a business, it's forced us to think outside the box and make be uncomfortable, um, and and grow. I think that's. I think it's really um, heartwarming, incredible, exciting to hear. There's lots of adjectives I want to use <laughs> uh, that you were able to one adjust to the realities of the world and and thrive inside of that. I think that's a really wonderful thing, and also that you didn't do what a lot of not only event companies did but businesses did in general, which was just say, "Well, I'm going to take the thing I did in person, meetings, events, sales kickoffs." whatever it is, and now just do them virtually. And it's going to be the same amount of time and set up the same way. And that having participated in too many of those was a terrible plan. And I think that the fact that you found ways to make things virtual that worked for virtual as opposed to just trying to adapt from live is really, it's really interesting. And I'm curious um what have you found that has worked really well or not worked really well inside of that space yeah i mean i can speak to something unfortunately that's still a challenge is the idea of trade shows and sponsorships has been challenging this past year for a lot of people to drive value to to really um create the same it's not the same it it won't be the same experience so i think and, and the evolution of the virtual trade show and the virtual sponsorship is, is continually changing and it will, it'll be interesting to see what happens in this next year. But that's been difficult for people because mm. it, you know, virtual trade show booths, like who's, you just, while you can measure, which is a huge plus, you know, before at a trade show on the floor, people are coming past your booth, you might scan them, like they're probably coming by to grab your tchotchkes and your gifts or whatever. Um, But now there's great analytics behind like who's coming in and how long they were there and did they download a resource. So the analytics piece is really robust and that's really exciting to see because then you're putting real measurement behind things. Mm -hmm. But it's the traffic. It's not the same kind of traffic. It's a challenge. And that continues to be a challenge. So trying to think outside the box, how to make those sponsorships, those, you know, trade show aspects unique and different and drive value for your partners is I think something everyone's still trying to work on. Um, On the flip side of that, there's so many fun things that, you know, we had a sales kickoff last summer and they were the, the team, it was in Latin America and the U S and they were supposed to go to Miami for their sales conference. They were gonna all go to Miami and have a great time in Miami. And, you know, well, COVID had a different idea. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we're like, let's bring Miami to them, right? Let's bring Miami to them and where they are. And it was so much fun. You know, we did it over two days, two, three days, actually. Um, we had, you know, a performer from Miami come on and do a session. We had a woman lead a Cuban coffee tasting um, everybody dressed up. We sent them all kits beforehand with towels and sunglasses and mugs. And we had like a social wall where everyone was like dressing up with their pets and their kids and, you know, and felt that connectedness. And we tried to keep the experience like it wasn't about a full day program because nobody wants to be sitting on Zoom or whatever technology for like eight hours endlessly. So we broke it up into like, you know, three, four hour chunks and tried to make it a little more manageable. Um, you know, and had fun background, like, so it really, 
at the end of the day, people, while they weren't in Miami, they had a flavor for Miami. And, and to us, that was a huge, a huge hit because, you know, we had a playlist that people could play and, and that while people were waiting for the meeting to start, you know, we, that, that the team contributed to. So it was kind of a opportunity for everybody to, you know, take part. Um, so I just think there's a ton of creative ways to make, make the virtual event experience come to life um, in different scenarios. So that's just one example. I could probably give you others, but I don't want to ramble on. But, um, you know, there's, it's an opportunity to get really creative. And I think it's about the connectedness at the end of the day, right? Like that like one thing that I heard inside of what you said was creating that idea, creating the feeling, not idea, creating the feeling of being connected, even when you're actually really quite disconnected right. and how you translate that. And I think that it sounds like you found some really creative ways to do that, which is phenomenal, especially considering everything is going to be hybrid going forward, whether it's events, whether it's how we work, whether it's it's all going to be a hybrid world. Yeah, absolutely. Always more opportunities inside of that, right? Yeah. And I think that, as you said previously, the, the sort of challenges when you try and create the same experience, right? It's not the same. It can yeah. be equal. Uh, sorry, it, it, it can't be equal. It just can't. You can't make it match an in-person to a virtual. It's just impossible. But you can try and make them equitable, right? Mm -hmm. And look at them through the lens of how can we make their experience somewhat similar in a different way, um, but you can't make them the same. <laughs> it's just not, it's not possible. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think that that's a really important thing in general right now. It's like people keep talking about going back to going back to the way things were. We're not going back to the way things were. We can't go back to the way things were. That's not, that's not what's going to happen. And it is changing the lens on it to be like, okay, so what does this look like going forward? What is, it's not going to be the same. It's never going to be the same. So what could it be? What does it look like? How could we have not an equal experience, but an equitable experience? What does the new lens on it look like? And I think that that's, I love that you and your business have like really been able to keep that top of mind in the past year. I think that's really exciting. Yeah, and I think a lot of people are saying, well, we used to do this and we used to do that. Well, here's an opportunity for you to wipe the slate clean and start fr fresh because what you used to do worked for then, but we're in a different world now. The new normal is this. And so how can you take advantage of that? Here's the chance for you to relaunch, refresh, change things up, look at it differently. And there are people who don't want to and won't, and yep. they'll continue to do things the way they've done them for you know many years. And then there's a lot of people who are open to that and excited about that. And I think that's where the, the fun is, is really you know challenging those, those clients and partners to, to wipe that say clean and look at things differently. Yeah. So I'm curious, and not just in the last year, I want to be super clear, this is not a pandemic question, but in okay. your journey through the world of event planning, through being an entrepreneur, running a business, working for other businesses, what have been sort of your, the key things that you've learned on your journey that you would share with someone who is either starting out or stepping into a journey of their own? Hmm. Good question. Change is inevitable. <laughs> Be okay with being uncomfortable because if anything this past year has taught me, when you think you have it just right, things change. So being able to adapt and be flexible is important because I think when you get set in your rigid ways, that's when you limit your own growth. And so I think sitting, it can be really uncomfortable, you know, and scary, but, you know, take, looking at it more as an exciting opportunity to, mm -hmm. to really being uncomfortable is not always a bad thing. It forces you to grow personally, professionally. It's a good opportunity for your business. Um, ours is one example of that um, and challenges you. So I would say be okay with change and be uncomfortable because it's going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a really, I mean, I am 
yes i say all the time that the only thing that's guaranteed is change so let's let's just get used to the fact that nothing is ever going to stay the same yeah 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 and I, you know and if i was going to add one more thing you know i've been listening glennon doyle i don't know if you you know i've she just started a podcast as well called we can do hard things and i just feel like that in itself is such an powerful phrase and especially this year, past year we can do hard things um even if we think we can't then we pause and look back and we're like no we can't you can do hard things um it's not always fun or easy but we can do hard things yeah i think that's a really great a, a really great and also a very important reminder um that we forget very easily yes. right it's easy to forget those things, especially when you're dealing with the unknown, when you're in the middle of a, a change, when all of that is happening. So I think that's an important reminder. Um, Lauren, where can folks find you online? Where can they learn more about you and what you're up to in the world? Yeah, um, you can go to lomaagency.com. That's where you find us. So L-O-M-A, then the word agency.com. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, and yeah, we'd love to love to expand our network and, and hear from you. Absolutely. And all those links will be in the show notes for anyone who's listening or watching to this. So they should be able to find you. Um, I want to thank you for being my guest today. It was really lovely to chat with you. And I really appreciate you being so open and transparent about your experience in the past year because I it's it's been unique. It's been a unique year. It has. <laughs> Well, thank you. It's been a lovely conversation. So thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. It's been my pleasure. Um, and for everyone listening, thank you for listening to Canada's podcast. Like, comment, and subscribe to all our channels to get the latest podcasts from entrepreneurs across Canada.